Holy Christ. That's not appropriate for YouTube. Holy whatever is appropriate. Uh, does, doesn't get me really censored here. What did you say, Nick? Uh, we have more news on this female, and I love this news because it is so controversial for some reason. For some reason. I don't know. I don't know. You already know what we're going to talk about. The good old female boxer that I've already addressed in this YouTube channel many times before. She was fighting against another Olympic boxer who quit. Oh, no. Who quit. Just gave up mid-fight. Well, this was a moment of history. It happened earlier today in France, and a major controversy, too, has now erupted out of Paris. An Algerian boxer shown in the red uniform who failed a gender eligibility test last year mm. has now won an opening fight after only 46 seconds. Her opponent breaking down in tears, calling it, quote, unjust. Uh, Greg Palcott picks it up from... <laughs> Nice. New shit, it is unjust. It's completely unfair. And I've spoken about this in spades, and I will continue to speak about it because it is a huge issue. If you ask yourself, Colton, why are you talking about this boxer again? You're not necessarily a gender politicist. You're just a bodybuilder who talks about steroids. And you're absolutely right, but I'm also a sports enthusiast. I like a fair sport. I like good competition. I like really aggressive competition. But in this sense, we don't have aggressive competition. We just have pure, just literal unfairness. That is all this is. We are having a male, a, a person who has failed a gender test to determine that they're a female competing against a female. Like how insane is this? And I spoke about it in a video. There is no, no wonder this female boxer has quit. She is fighting someone who has the hormone levels of a female on anabolic steroids. That wouldn't be considered fair. She wouldn't be allowed to fight in the Olympics. She shouldn't be allowed in the Olympics, period. But for some reason, this is completely different and okay. Why? I'm not so sure. I don't necessarily understand the logic behind a decision like this. I get everyone should be able to compete, and I get that, hey, it's just more fairness. She has the genetic advantage as an athlete. But the thing is that everyone keeps continuing to miss is she failed a gender test. She didn't pass as a female. Now she has a disease, so this is sensible that she wasn't able to do this. But I would say that there needs to be an exception made in this case. Because again, if this is okay, then another instance of being okay would be a female taking testosterone at an extremely high super physiological dose, enhancing her physiology and allowing her to beat most of her competitors on a any sport, really. Once you open up this jar of worms, it gets really fucking messy for everybody who's involved in sports and specifically the Olympics. London with more on what happened in the ring. Greg. Hey, Bill. Yeah, big controversy indeed at the Olympics. A boxer deemed a biological male beating an Italian female opponent with the Italian crying out, I couldn't take it anymore. Despite failing that gender test by the International Boxing Association and being banned from an international tournament last year, Algerian 25-year-old Iman Khalif was okayed by Olympic authorities to compete. And apparently today it was a very one-sided fight with Italian Angela Carini, also 25. After just 46 seconds and several sharp punches to the head, including the nose by Khalif, Carini abandoned the fight, threw her helmet to the floor, stormed off the boxing ring, and in fact went on to say that she had never felt such strong blows in a contest before. Now, Algerian Khalif has competed for several years in other international tournaments, including the Olympics. <laughs> Elevated levels of testosterone. Algerian and there you have the exact reason why I don't think this is fair at all. She has elevated levels of testosterone. You, again, you can use the argument that this is just a genetic clivity. She has a better set of circumstances than another person. This is no different if a tall person plays basketball versus a short person, but you're entirely wrong. This is a disease and she's 
But again, biologically, she has female genitalia, but male everything else. And I had a video recently made where I went through a volleyball team that had trans athletes on their entire team, and they were dominating the entire college or collegiate scene of, of volleyball. And I spoke because these males who are now females didn't have any gender affirming therapies, didn't have anything that was making them more female outside of just changing their physical appearance and getting longer hair and things. And these massive benefits that they get from being physiologically a male. And at birth, when you've been exposed to super physiological or even just higher physiological levels of testosterone, there's tons of benefits. You have increased bone mineral density. I even went through the neurotical wow. benefits such as having greater improved motor skill learning at a much more rapid pace than a female, having better motor unit recruitment, much more than a female, and even up to having more myonuclei stored within muscle tissue, even compared to a female. In almost every circumstance a male is having better proclivity to physical performance and output than a female and a female who has super physiological levels of testosterone or a female is getting the same if not similar adaptations as males would have it's also why it's not fair when let's just say if i was to take steroids and i get all these super physiological benefits bone mineral density increased mount nuclei etc etc then i came off and went to a physiological normal level of hormonal influence competed with someone who's been natural their entire lives. I am still taking with me lifelong benefits from the hormones that I've used, both in a neurological sense, with motor performance, and a physiological sense. So even if a female was to become a female later in her life, she would still retain a ton of the benefits that she had from being a male earlier in her life. I.e., this shit ain't fair. Get him out of here! Get out! Hearing sports officials have called the charges against Khalif baseless, but others have raised concerns about the health of opposing athletes when, according to one, a man fights a woman. And Khalif is not the only one getting attention. Taiwan boxer Lin Yu Ting is competing in the Olympics, including a fight tomorrow, and has also been deemed a biological male, according to the International Boxing Association. In a statement, the IBA said in part, this test conclusively indicated that both athletes did not meet necessary eligibility criteria and were found to have competitive advantages over other female competitors. One more quote from the defeated Italian, boxing is a sport that teaches you to have respect for the opponent. It cannot and must not become an abuse. Back to you. Bill. What a story. Um, I think it's quite a moment in this whole campaign, whether it's here or overseas. Greg, thank you for that in London. We got more Thanks. on this now, Dana. Want to bring it Look, there's just no way in the world that this is fair. There's no way. You can't convince me that this is just her genetic proclivity that's allowing her to be better than everybody else. You can't convince me that someone should be able to compete even if they were once a male and they're now female. It is just not fair at a biological and molecular level. And I'll say this over and over again. There's too many clear-cut differences that are very well defined within research. It just, it's impossible. There's a reason that there's male and female categories in sports because of the differentiation between male physiology and female physiology. And if this can of worms continues to crack open, the situation only gets that much worse, literally sport by sport. We've freaking seen like the copious amount of trans athletes and volleyball and all sorts of different weird shit. And now it's spreading into combat sports, which I think should have been the harbor of safety between that sort of wokeism and competitive sports like insanity insanity that you would place in a competitive world renowned globally renowned sport and in specifically in organization a, a male at a physiological level a male with a female and expect something good to happen doesn't make sense it never will make sense if you're new here subscribe like this video and i do recommend clicking a video right around here that takes you into where i talk about the volleyball players